So, if you're interested in the weird spelling of Encyclopedia that's used in Encyclopedia Britannica, um, I'm going to explain how it works in this video. So, uh, it's basically considered the British spelling, and uh, there's some different theories as to how it came to be that I'm going to go through here. So, uh, we start with the etymology. And the etymology of Encyclopedia goes to Pseudo-Greek. A combination of basically the Greek word for circular and the Greek word for child rearing slash education. Paideia. And the editors of the encyclopedia had a had an interest in, especially Mortimer J. Adler, um, had an interest in creating these neologisms, which is just a means a new word. And so the micropedia and the macropedia which um, you can see right here, also have this spelling. And that A-E letter is called Ash. That's what it's called, but it sounds like just cat or bat or mat. You also have the So he basically invented these new words but the funny thing is, um, when you trace back the etymology, it started out as a fake word. Encyclopedia itself is a fake or pseudo-Greek word. And what that means is, um, and you see, this is kind of advanced, but univerbated. Um, it's a technical term for when a word gets fixed in a certain form. Um, and my understanding is it's basically all the uh, declining and conjugating of uh, nouns and verbs in Greek and Latin. Um, you'll hear this sometimes with alumna versus alumnus versus alumni. Um, sometimes these things get fixed into a certain uh, declension. You can see the different... Um, forms of paideia here, first declension, uh, singular. So paideia goes back to um, Greek, and uh, if you trace it back here, I just clicked on this, so ancient Greek paideia goes back to this rear a child from pious child. And then child goes back to basically Sanskrit, Proto-Indo-European. Um, and we looked at uh, Macropedia, Propedia. Um, some of you know Cornell West, and he's probably the person who uses this the most of anybody these days and uh, I, f I just I wanted to see how he remind myself how he pronounces it paideia um, but you see how the sound the spelling of it and the sound kind of changes encyclopedia the e sound ver versus paideia which is like pie like eating a pie so uh I'll come back to this in a second. It to you. All those corpses at the end. Can you take it? Take the text and throw it against the wall. It's too much. That's called pie there. That's called education. 
Toni Morrison's Beloved will do it. Darwin's Origins will do it. Nietzsche's Genealogy of Morals will do it. Kafka's The Metamorphosis will do it. Listen to some John Coltrane's Love Supreme will do it. Listen to Jay-Z on a high moment will do it. Paideia, singing paideia, textual paideia, various ways in which trying to get you to engage in what Simone they call a formation of attention. That's the first moment of paideia. How do you convince people to move from the superficial to the substantial, to move from the frivolous to the serious, to move from bling to wrestling with truth? justice and sorrow and sadness and joy. That's that turning of the soul. In the relation of that formation of attention to the cultivation of a self that respects reality. That goes on. He mentions a lot of the classics there. Gets into more modern day stuff with Kafka, Metamorphosis, and then goes uh then he goes into um john coltrane love supreme and jay-z and uh the word the simone de beauvoir is the is the name he um meant to say there i believe so uh ash was adapted to uh the ash sound wasn't in latin so it didn't really fit so they had to create something for it um came over from christian missionaries who basically it was just an oral language there nobody was writing anything down and then they adapted the latin script to it So, named after the Anglo-Saxon rune. And there's a number of different uh, pronunciations of it. So it's not a one-to-one. -one. Here's another pseudo-Greek Oxford Encyclopedia, Ox uh, OED, Oxford English Dictionary. Um, here's another entry. On, this is Affex's affixes.org um, and basically uh, the key thing here this map just shows you Anglo-Saxons the Angles and the Saxons came over and colonized Britain um, 400 to 500 A.D. jutes as well but you see they just have a toehold there so uh there's also some interesting stuff here but basically repeats what i just said about the pseudo greek and, and the the whole deal with pseudo greek is that if you and this is done in academia a lot if you want to come up with a new word uh, you combine two or three roots plus an affix plus a suffix and you create your new word. And there's also kind of a branding thing where uh, this was particularly popular a few hundred years ago and even more recently to kind of link yourself to something more ancient. That's part of the idea of the classics as well as you're going back and linking to the great works of the canon or of a canon. So it's not just linking back to uh, ancient Greek or ancient Roman works, but you have uh, Cornell here linking back to uh, Jay-Z and John Coltrane and uh, which are sort of like the canon of hip hop or the canon of rap. Or the canon of blues and uh, just black music, African American music in general. So, uh, a canon can exist in any genre and in any kind of cultural form. 
and you see him kind of combining that. So uh, that's that's the history. Uh, one last little factoid, if you're interested. Um, Elon Musk and Grimes, uh, you may remember a few years ago, or it might have been a year or two ago, they announced their first child. And uh, his name was X Ash A12. And so uh, the explanation of that is X is an unknown variable or it's just within math. It's used as a uh, variable for something unknown. Um, it's also used in some states for birth certificates that don't have a gender. Um, that's just my own kind of interpretation of it. I don't, they'd never mentioned that, but, um, that's used on some birth certificates for neither male nor female. Uh, then Ash is explained as Elvin's spelling of AI. So artificial intelligence and also love in Chinese. And then A-12 is their favorite aircraft, but was mostly Elon Musk's contribution. And that was um, kind of like the U-2 spy plane. It was a different spy plane, didn't have any weapons on it, um, but was very fast and would go over Soviet Union and uh, take pictures. And uh, I did a video a while ago on Elon Musk's appearance on the hardcore history podcast and you get a sense of he talks about etymology his he has a very high interest in etymology that he talks about at the very end of that podcast also knows quite a bit about different models of airplanes and you hear them talking about it back and forth and he brought one of his engineer friends on there also um, and they talk about it and it, it kind of um, links to his concept of a competitive moat. So within kind of competition between companies, a moat is... Uh, Warren Buffett talks about it also. Uh, a, your, your moat kind of pre prevents other people from just copying what you're doing or doing exactly what you're doing. Um and Elon has a famous quote where he says, I think moats are lame. They're nice in a sort of quaint vestigial way. If your only defense against invading armies is a moat, you will not last long. What matters is the pace of innovation. That is the fundamental determinant of competitiveness. And that was during his Q1 earnings call for Tesla in 2018. So uh, the, the connection here is is the airplane you know this spy plane didn't have any weapons on it it was all about speed and so uh speed of airplane speed of innovation it's uh it's a focus on speed and kind of evasion as opposed to direct conflict and uh, yeah, that's just something I I thought of, and um, who knows how that's connected to uh, everything else he's involved in. But uh, I think I'll leave it there. Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention is ligature. So ligature is when things are joined, words are joined together. And Beowulf also has um, has some of that in it. So I'll leave it there for now. Let me know if you know anything else about this in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to get more content like this. And I'll uh, and also check out the link below for the playlist 
excuse me on other stuff in other uh, videos in this series and also there'll be a link to a free resources spreadsheet on my website that um, lists out a bunch of different free resources uh, related to encyclopedias, great books, classics, all that kind of stuff. Um, because a lot of this stuff is pretty hard to find on your own. So um, I'll leave it there and I'll see you in the next video.